about that, but that's fine. We'll try to just move forward in things. Katie Christensen. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, fellas. Hi, how are you? I'm tired. How are you guys? <laughs> we're 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 good. Yeah. Yeah. Why well, you you tired, huh? A tough game last night. You thirty thirty five minutes. Celtics are physical. They're tough. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. It was a physical game and, and uh yeah, it was it's my kind of game. Had I been playing, I would have thrived for sure. Yeah. Well, I think the question is this, uh, based on some of the stuff I'm seeing online. Katie, they lost to the Jazz uh, when the Jazz weren't playing, arguably three of their best players. Now they get uh, embarrassed at home by Boston. Uh, is Mike Brown on the hot seat, Katie? <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, he's on the hot seat. That's, right. Yeah, the same way that Kendrick Perkins lost his job. Ah, um, so there's like, boom! No, <laughs> like, you're not bothered, right? Like most. No, yeah. no. You know, one thing that did bother me, and this is just, I don't, I don't know why this happened last night, but I was a little perturbed personally that Joe Mazzula left his starters in for so long. Yeah. Like I, I felt like that was kind of a, a statement um, that he was trying to make. And I know that it wasn't necessarily directed at the Kings. I think it was directed a little bit more at kind of what's going on in Boston, the environment there. He's a little bit on the hot seat in the sense that, you know, he, he, the intern ta uh, tag was removed and he's the head coach. And then they've struggled from the all-star break. And, you know, uh, Boston media is a little bit different than maybe what Sacramento media is like. So it's been a little bit volatile for him out there. And I don't know if that's what was going on, but, I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of that at all. There was no reason to do that. Um, and I, I said it on air, I think, like maybe he could make the argument that he was trying to, to get his core group that have only played 81 minutes together going into last night's game some time on the floor. But that's not the case either because um, Robert Williams was taken out during that time. So I don't know. I was a little perturbed about that. But in the end, when you talk about it from the Kings' perspective, I think the important thing is you look at the Milwaukee game and you look at the Boston game. They were right in it with Milwaukee. Um, Kevin Herter being out is, is impactful, for sure. It makes a difference. But also the defense that that Celtics team played, they made it really, really difficult for the Kings to be able to get the type of offensive production that they normally do, uh, particularly in the paint. So one thing I can say about Mike Brown and this, this team this year is when they have games like that, when they struggle with one thing or another, they do a really good job of going back to the drawing board and figuring out how to work through it. And we generally don't see it again right after it happens. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I think that that was a good I think that was a good test for them because we're talking playoffs guys. And this is the type of teams you're going to get in the playoffs. Yeah. I think that's a great point, Katie. I remember we were talking with you, I don't know, two months ago, a month and a half ago, whenever Toronto came through, it was really the first team that I would say totally dismantled the Kings the way their offense just couldn't do anything. And we asked, is this a blueprint? And you didn't think it would be because just what you said, the Kings would adjust, find yeah. their, their way. And they have, uh, Boston was a team that switched everything, and early on, I thought Sabonis had so many different mismatches that he could take advantage of, but never really could. So what did you see there that Boston's ability to kind of take the Kings out of what we normally see from them offensively? Yeah, they do a really good job of really sending bodies. So even though there were mismatches, they take away all of the, the driving lanes. And as soon as he did put the ball on the floor, there was three guys around him. And when he tried to kick out, they knew where he was kicking out to, and they anticipated those passes, and they came up with a lot of turnovers. And you talk about like creating a little bit of your own destiny in a game. The Kings were not able to turn that team over at a, at a regular rate. I mean, they had two turnovers at halftime. And they had they picked up their third turnover in the fourth quarter, and that's been a problem for this Boston team as of late. Their fourth quarter turnovers, and they were able to turn them over a little bit in the fourth quarter more than they did <laughs> the previous three. But at that point, it's too late. So if you can't get in the paint, if you can't um, create turnovers and get out in transition, especially against a team that is so good in the half court defensively, so you know, in essence, you're really just stuck with, you know, setting up your half court offense and trying to, to get them to make a mistake. And they just don't make many mistakes on that end. 
Katie Christensen joining us. Katie, so we, we know that Boston's a fantastic defensive team. They're also, I think it was number four in, in offensive rating. I mean, they're top four in both. So when it comes to the Kings defense as a whole, I don't know if it was more Boston's offense, less the Kings defense, but give the Kings defense a letter grade on how they performed last night. Well, you know, I would say maybe a maybe a C C C plus if I'm being generous. They just were not able to slow them down. And I thought a big thing and I love how you did that. I know why you gave did the letter grade, by the way. Yeah. Um but but anyway, I give them on a scale of one to ten. <laughs> I didn't know if you catch it or not. <laughs> I catch it all baby. Um but, you know, I, I think that the, the reality of the situation is is that, obviously, when you look at the offensive personnel for Boston, they keep coming at you. When they bring in the, their three guys off the bench and they really they have a, a, a tight eight-man rotation, um, it doesn't really let up at all, you know. And so they just keep coming at you, and they do such a good job of creating threes for themselves and mismatches and those types of things. Um, they're just that good on both ends. They're the only team in the league that is in the top five in both offensive and defensive rating. Yeah. And so it's, it's no mistake that they've had the success that they've had. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think the Kings tried, but I would say maybe a CC plus if I'm being generous. We believe that Kevin Herter will be back uh, for this weekend, but and I'm assuming, Katie, he goes right back into the starting lineup. But, but Kessler Edwards has done enough to be in the rotation now, hasn't he? Yeah, I think so. Um, it's interesting. I asked Mike Brown in pregame media availability about what he is like from Kessler. And the answer that he gave me about him being in the starting lineup is that they wanted to take a look at him and they wanted to see what he was capable of in terms of his defensive versatility. And they wanted him to be on Bradley Beal. They wanted him to be on, on Bridges. They wanted him to even play against Markinen, and Markinen didn't end up playing. But you're talking about going from a two guard to like a seven foot, you know, three point shooter. And, and so I more look at, at him keeping him in that starting lineup, which traditionally it's been, it's been, um, uh, Terrence Davis that has been in the starting lineup when Kevin Herter has missed games in the past. I think this is just another really brilliant job by Mike Brown of you've got someone that you, you think has certain potential. It's late in the season. There's not a lot of time to figure it out. So you put him in that position in that starting lineup because you just wanted to get an extended look at him. And to me, that's, that's not playing for the now that's playing for the future. And that's what this, this coaching staff is really looking at right now they are already thinking about playoffs. They are already thinking about what they can do, who's going to be valuable, what situations will people be valuable in. And so I, I found that really, really intriguing. And, you know, he was on Jason Tatum last night, and the first, the first play of the game, he fouls him on the low block. The second or the first play of the second half, they take him down to the low block. He does a better job defending that that, that time. But, you know, it, to me, it's just it's strategic coaching because they're looking ahead they're not just looking at hey this this 48 minutes that we're about to embark on um he's he's got a long-term plan in place and I, I applaud that if we agree that Kessler Edwards and I don't know do we agree guys that Kessler Edwards is a top two three individual defender on I think the team? so okay and he's shooting let me see here, uh, 53% from the field and 43, 44% from behind the arc. Number one, isn't that the definition of a three and D guy? Number two, does that make a, does that make an argument? Is there an argument, even though it won't happen, Katie, to keep starting? him? Um, no. Okay. And listen, I'm a huge fan of Kessler. I'm a big fan of him defensively. And he struggled a little bit more the last couple games, obviously, because he's in that starting lineup and he is being cast with guarding the best player on these teams. And, you know, when you look at him coming off the bench as a role player, I will continually point out just how good he is defensively. So I can say that his shooting numbers have gotten better over the last couple games. I mean, they were, you know, it was like 25% from beyond the arc. But, I mean, it was such a small, incredibly small sample size that it's not 
fair to say that that's the type of offensive player he is. I think he has the potential long term to be a really solid three and D guy and develop into someone that maybe could play major minutes. But I think his best use right now is what we were seeing prior to the Kevin Herter injury is spot defense, right? Like, being brought in to, to take on a certain matchup and wreak a little havoc off, off the bench. Um, but I, I will say I really, really do love his game, and I want to see if he's able to maintain those type of offensive numbers as his role kind of is expanded, whether if it's this year or next year. You're the best. Katie Christensen, TV analyst for your Sacramento Kings. Thanks so much for getting up and talking to us, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right, fellas. All right. Take Thank care. you. That's Katie. The other night, Mark Jones asked her to uh, forget who it was, but give him a letter grade. And then she went on with her explanation and then ended up giving the letter grade of about seven. <laughs> that was the reference there. Gotcha. That's, that's she actually, I did not that. know in what the real life. Was. You cannot get her to do that. We'll take a break. When we come back uh, that level, that level, the Boston Celtics are at that level, the Sixers and the Bucks are at that we've seen this year. Can the Kings get to that level as well. Also, some early numbers speaking of on Kessler Edwards' defense. We'll do that next. The only place you'll find Keegan Murray is Sacktown Sports. Out to Keegan Murray, straight away for three, and Keegan knocks down the triple. Hey, Sacramento, it's Keegan Murray, and you're listening to the home of Sacramento Kings, Sacktown Sports. Your local sports leader. What's up? We're talking to Chad Hoblet of Hoblet Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Woodland. Chad, what's going on for Chrysler's Jeep celebration event? We have the biggest savings since 2020 with up to 15000 off MSRP when you lease a new 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee 4xE. Those 4xE plug-ins are pretty awesome. Any special going on for Dodge? Right now, get up to 5500 off MSRP on new 2022 Dodge Charger GTs. But with this kind of savings, they won't last long. Nobody will treat you better than Hoblet Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. Come see for yourself.